Hello YouTube, welcome back to the bench. Today we're going to look at a uh, older style Smith & Wesson. This is a model uh, 3913, 39, um, also known as the Ladysmith actually. Uh, this is a single stack 9mm version of uh, what was one of their more substantial uh, police model firearms. Um, design wise uh, they are identical except for a double stack magazine um, they have all the same features uh, the decocker built into the safety and um, uh, some other fairly interesting things this came out to be a relatively lightweight gun compared to uh, its big brothers um, uh, which were extremely substantial guns so this is actually a nice light one it doesn't weigh too much more than than a similarly sized Glock, but it is an all metal frame, and um, uh, like I said, the the larger version um, was a hugely popular uh, police carry weapon in the uh, 80s. Um, just good design, reliable design, uh, elegant, to be honest. Uh, in many ways, so uh, let's dig into it. Firearm is clear. Uh, takedown position is uh, right here. And there's a little force. Uh, basically, you're lining up the back of the slide stop. And uh, once you get it past the frame, it's easiest if you actually let some of that pressure back off of it. There's a divot in the pin. It's actually getting its tension from uh, the recoil spring. The hammer's going to automatically drop. As we take that off, uh, we're going to set the frame aside for now and come back to that in a little bit. I believe it is a non-captivated recoil rod, so hang on to it. Uh, the spring is uh, unidirectional, or excuse me, bidirectional, so it doesn't doesn't matter. Um, this is an interesting mechanism. This detent is actually what's uh, applying force um, to return the slide stop uh, to the downward position when the magazine isn't pushing it up. Uh, barrel lifts up and out, not uh, too unusual. Um, but what is unusual is that uh, this is a lug locked um, barrel, um, not something that was uh, generally done. Once you moved um, to a, uh, a a locking block that was down in the frame to have the barrel tilt back and uh, or. Uh, you, you generally just use the, the front of the chamber where it met with the front of the firearm. Um, this one still maintains a locking lug similar to uh, the ones in your 1911. Um, also the contoured barrel there, that means when it is, and there is a permanent bushing um, in the in the slide, which means that when the gun is in battery, it has uh, no wiggle room on the barrel. Once it's cycling, um, you know, the barrel flops around, but when it's actually locked up, it is extremely accurate uh, because, it's like, similar to you know, most match barrel designs, it really has nowhere to move, and the contours uh, you know, allow it to unlock uh, very easily. Now, uh, unlike many of the firearms we've done to date, this one, uh, this one gets complicated. No, uh, no simple way to put that. Uh, it's just a more uh, complicated design and now that I'm thinking about it I'm wondering if I ever even got this extractor pin out before could uh, could run into a dead end pretty quick here that would be humorous if nothing else so I'm just gonna set this up so we can knock this out with the correct size pin eyeballing this and my eyeballs tell me that it looks like that hole is either slightly larger at the top or the same all the way through so I'm going to try and get it out from the bottom up here and uh, I have new lighting in place which means I have almost no room to work the hammer uncertain whether that moved at all. 
so there'll be some excitement here. Let's try that again. Make sure I'm lined up. I'm becoming more certain that it's not moving. How's that? Just on a whim, we'll try it from the other side. So, what you do when this happens is uh, you may have to give up. Depends on the equipment you have. Um, I will take this to the larger bench and hit it with a slightly larger hammer. But before I risk actually damaging it, uh, what I'll end up doing is uh, use a press. So, you cinch this up in the press and uh, you know, put your punch in the press and let the press force that down and before I did that I would also soak it in some croil, some penetrating oil. Uh, croil is K-R-O-I-L. It's a very thin weight oil and it'll get inside wherever it can over the course of a couple hours and possibly uh, loosen that pin up. Um, I feel like I've managed to get it out before historically speaking but uh, for this video I'm not gonna sit here wailing on it. Um, it is just the extractor. We can still clean around it pretty well uh, so we're not going to worry about that one for right now uh, but again if you do stumble across something like that stop wailing on it don't don't damage the firearm uh, don't just keep hitting it harder change to the better tool sometimes you, your hand tools are just not adequate if something has been machine pressed in these things happen so um, uh, as it does have uh, ambidextrous safety and uh, hammer drop <clears throat> we have to get that out now. Uh, there's a hole in this side, which I just realized this punch is too big for. So it's not under a whole lot of tension. There is a detent in there, and you just got to start it moving. But as I said, it's a detent, which means you don't want to move it too far without putting your thumb over it because it's going to pop up. So that's the hole that that pin was sitting in, and that is the pin and its spring. So those guys were holding that in place and so that comprises the left side of the or excuse me the right side of the safety now from experience there's another detent except for this one is actually uh, inside the left side of the, of the safety and it's gonna shoot out towards us as soon as we start to back this bad boy off. So, um, again, you want to be, uh, whoops. <laughs> You're also going to have to manipulate the firing pin to get it out of the way. And, um, as you move that back and forth, you're going to get to the point. Oh, sorry. I'm gun shy. Pardon the pun. Um, it's been so long. <laughs> oh, you know what it is? I forgot my basics. The firing pin safety has got to be pushed in order for us to actually get that firing pin all the way out of the way. And it helps remember which of these is the firing pin safety. Well, balls. Let's try this again, thinking a little bit more clearly. All right. So, firing pin safety... There we go. Now we have pushed that guy all the way through. So now when we begin to manipulate it, we get it a little further out. And uh, what I'm cautiously looking for is... I don't remember where the hell the other detent is, but it's in there. Might even be coming up from the side on this one. It's been so long I don't remember, but we're going to find out. So... Uh, as we work our safety out, we're going to remember that firing pin will come shooting out at us uh, sooner or later. So, there it is. I knew there was a detent in there somewhere. So, on the back side, underside, there's the uh, groove that it uh, sits in on the back. 
and uh, does its thing there and there. So now that that's aside, uh, we can release that firing pin safety and uh, it comes shooting out for us. Obviously there's a spring in there too, so I'm gonna fish the spring out the same way. We have to uh, push in on the safety while we uh, tap that a little bit. There we go. So nice funky shaped firing pin, but at least it's uh, symmetrical all the radially, so we don't have to worry about top side, left side, right side. Uh, and the spring also is uh, universal, so we don't have to worry about which end went in first. And you will notice uh, all manner of crazy cuts in this um, uh, safety selector because of all the different things it do does. And we're going to get into that a little bit more on the frame side. But uh, just for reference, once it's sitting in here with no pressure, um, in the fire position, you have a, a clear line of sight for the firing pin. In the safe position, it simply rolls a big chunk back there so that the firing pin is completely obscured. Um, the other thing it's doing uh, when you put it into the safe position is you'll notice that uh, this surface here is definitely, you know, it's flat here when it's in fire. When you move it down to safe, now this is intruding in. So if something is sitting here, it's going to get bumped. And uh, dollars to donuts, that's going to be... Uh, you guessed it, the uh, hammer drop mechanism. And uh, for the life of me, I can't remember what the hell that piece is. So, not to sound uh, too enthusiastic, what I'm doing is I'm looking down. Uh, see if I throw a little light on there, maybe you guys can see down the rabbit hole as well. Um, essentially, only a little bit of that plastic piece intrudes at all. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't remember what the hell the plastic piece is doing. Um, the, the rear sight is, is uh, what's holding both of these in. Firing pin safety is pretty standard. It, it, you know, it intrudes into the pathway. Uh, in the normal position, something has to push it up for this to get past it. This is just too big otherwise. So that's not a rocket science mechanism. And uh, the other one, is it, is it the other way around? Does it intrude when it's pushed up? Hmm. I don't know. We're going to check that out when we get into the uh, frame uh, to get a better look at what exactly that's doing. So we're going to set all these guys aside for now and jump over to the frame and uh, show you some of the crazy action going on there. Oh, I forgot I have a broken piece in here. Oh, that makes me sad. Eh, I need a new trigger bar. Um... So, uh, remembering what's going on uh, here, um, the firing pin safety is on the right side of the gun, so one of these levers is obviously related to that, and then the ejector, um, is that the ejector? Do we have a permanent ejector? No, that's the ejector. The ejector is what's uh, underneath that, that white piece, so that's a flippin' mystery to me. Actually, based on where that is, that plastic piece is like riding down over here. I almost think the purpose of the plastic piece is really just to push this down when you're taking the slide off or putting it back on. I don't know. We'll figure it out as we go through. But let's try and figure out what the other parts are. Um, uh, as we pull the trigger, this one on the right is moving up. This one on the left, uh, not so much. So they're both under spring tension, but only the the right side lever. And the spring is making them kind of flop up, but uh, realistically, um, do, 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 do. so um, I'm guessing that if this one up here is our uh, firing pin safety, 
that this one is uh, our hammer drop. And we will test that theory by pushing down on it really hard. Sure enough. So as I, I mentioned, when the uh, safety is in there, if I can orient it correctly so that we see which side is which, um, when you flip the safety on, this piece right here is going to cam down and push that hammer drop uh, as it's uh, putting it onto safe. <laughs> ah, I am stumped as to what's going on with that ejector. So let's uh, think about where our disconnector is. Oh, that might have something to do with it. Notice that when the ejector is pushed down, the disconnect is going down with it. So, when that's cocked. We're going to disconnect coming up. We drop the hammer. If we just pull it back, Ooh, it locks anyway. There's the disconnect. But that redisconnects it. So when I when that ejector is down. Oh, you know what that is? That's a that's a trigger safety. Well, that's damn novel. So what I'm thinking so hard about here is that um, right now, if I if I if my trigger runs into tension there, I'm picking up the sear, and if I pull any harder, then the hammer will drop. However, I, I noticed that uh, the disconnector is also being you know, lifted up in, in, in my trigger pull, but if the ejector is pushed down, now my trigger goes all the way back, and it doesn't catch the sear, because it's, it's a disconnect. So if that plastic that plastic piece I'm trying to see exactly what it pushes down on if that plastic piece is pushing down on the ejector it looks for all the world like that is uh, So we can see that plastic piece and see exactly what it's doing and see whether it ever engages in that extra uh, ejector or not. So I'm not sure how well you guys can see this film wise, but keeping an eye on the white plastic uh, plunger to see if anywhere in that stroke it does anything other and hold the ejector all the way down and it doesn't so What else? Don't think it has a magazine safety because we can do this all day long. But maybe, oh, uh, that's what it is. Wow, that's a crazy ass magazine safety that doesn't actually do anything with the frame separated from the slide. So, uh, magazine out, the ejector can be pushed down uh, and with it the the disconnector so um, when we're we're cocked there that disconnector not important because uh, it, it goes under tension when the trigger bar is being pulled but if something is holding the the ejector down then the disconnector gets pushed down with it and uh, your trigger doesn't do nothing so what keeps the ejector from getting pushed down ta-da side of the freaking magazine go figure 
So now the ejector can't get pushed down, even though that white plastic piece is trying to. Uh, when the gun is cycling, then the ejector is free to pop up to its proper position. But when the gun comes into battery, that uh, that's going to push down on it as far as it can, which isn't far enough to cause it to stop the disconnector. So that is a magazine safety built into the slide of all places and keyed off of the ejector. Told you this gun had some crazy ass stuff going on in it. Um, sorry, I, I think this is a cool gun for this and many other reasons. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Uh, hmm. Well, at once once upon a time in life, uh, I used to have the pin for this. Obviously, I don't right now. Oh, that's a terrible habit. Um, so, if I still had the pin, I would have had to knock the pin out first. Um, it's a normal, uh, you know, hammer base of, of frame type uh, takedown pin. It's got a groove in the middle because... Uh, as we can see when we get it off, there's a the, the hammer strut casing um, is going to poke into it. Now the one thing about getting these grips off, these funky plastic grips, is you do have to kind of, um, they go straight back, but you have to pull them out just a little bit widthwise to give them clearance because of this, uh, this lip design in them. Uh, those guys, you, you can't just push them straight on, you do have to spread them apart just a little bit. Uh, but once they're off, then, then they're out of your way. As I was mentioning, the uh, the base, the hammer spring uh, holder here, has that bump in the bottom that would normally lock that pin in place, the pin that I'm missing. And there's our hammer spring. So now we don't have to worry about uh, spring tension with the hammer anymore. Uh, the magazine release is also kind of cool so uh, this spring here is uh, a spring but then the magazine head is the uh, magazine release button is screwed onto it so now I got to be very careful and release that and uh, the magazine release itself can fall out that side of the gun and this is providing both the lock mechanism because on the underside of the button it, it's going to lock into either the left or right side if you see how that groove is cut um uh, you know that 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 the head of this pin is going to lock in there so that it can't unscrew or screw in anymore and then this itty bitty spring in here is our magazine spring so unlike uh normal magazines where that's you know more on the back um for whatever reason, they decided to get crazy and make a screw-on uh, magazine release. So that's what was going on in the uh, when it was put together there. So now let's take just a couple seconds here to deal with some of the funkier parts because uh, once this starts to fall apart it's going to fall apart kind of kind of hard. So um, down here is your sear pin. This is your hammer pin. And this is also a, a spring mechanism for your takedown lever. Um, this leaf spring in the back. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yes, this leaf spring here is what's pushing on the sear. So that's that's your sear force. The sear will get good picture of it in a minute when we get in there um, and what's going on with this piece is this is permanently attached to the hammer pin and then it has these two legs which are captivating the sear pin in a groove so as we start to push these out the sear is going to pop out and the hammer is going to pop out and all of these pins are going to go flying out all at the same time it's pretty spectacular when you're not expecting it so Hopefully I'll do some effort at containment, but we'll find out. So once again, we got to remember that this is our ejector slash magazine safety. We've got a disconnector floating around in there. We've got our hammer drop and we've got our firing pin safety. And under each of these is a spring as well. And uh, as I mentioned, once I start to move 
the hammer pin, the sear pin kind of has to come with it because of the way they are locked together. Um, and there's uh, no good way around that. So when I do this, there's going to be a giant sproing and then everything's going to go flying everywhere. So do, 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 do. Um, now this pin, uh, you can pull it out of there. And in assembly, I've seen people snap uh, snap this over by just pushing down on it really hard. You know, I'm sure there's a right way to do it. And that if I had a Smith & Wesson Armorer's book, it would have the super secret sauce. Um, but I've never actually seen it uh, online. I haven't gone looking, but I haven't noticed it. Um, this is that uh, sear. Now, uh, your first thought might be, wow, that's funky looking. And, and you'd be right. Um, so the sear pin, I'm going to go ahead and keep that out of its little groove. The uh, sear pin is sitting in here, and there is a leaf spring pushing on the bottom backwards. So it's pushing these two uh, giant claw into, um, hopefully, the hammer. So this, this area up top is your actual sear engagement. And uh, you want to know what's going on with that funky claw shape? Well, you're going you're gonna to find out. There's a couple things that this has to go past in here. Um, so first I'm just going to lift out some of the uh, easier to get at pieces. I'm going to take away what we established was our ejector slash magazine safety and its little spring. That's what this little hole is, is a cup for that spring. Set him aside. And we're going to, I'm not sure if the, yeah, these guys come out kind of roll them forward as they come out and uh, some funky shapes we're gonna have to get into to see what they're pushing on later um, and again this is your uh, hammer drop part of the safety and this is your uh, firing pin safety and one more itty bitty spring in the other cup okay and our hammer itself um, <laughs> it has writing on it. Not sure if you can read it. Not for use in model 39 or 69. So, uh, yeah, these hammers are messed up complicated. Um, this one, I, I, this is another pawn shop gun. This one had been torn up. Um, it took me a while to file it back down to usefulness. So I'm not even sure what the original angles looked like. Um, it, it does have a half cock notch, uh, but it's got a lot of other stuff going on in it so i think this is the true sear notch but the, the half cock really you know it's been so long i don't even know that might not even be a half cock that's looks like it's way the hell back there we'll get into it in a second and find out this leaf spring is held in by this this pin here you could drive that out if you had some burning desire to uh, i'm not sure if my i think my punch is a little wide uh, maybe, maybe it would get through there trying to desire, decide here if my desire is truly burning or not. I think that'll be determined by uh, about, say, let's give it one, two, three taps and see if it moved at all. Eh, alright, it moved. We'll tap it out. If I can't get this back in, I'm blaming you, YouTube. disconnector sorry about not pulling that out deliberately uh, so the the leaf spring there it does have um, a little tail end that lets it seat into that hole in the frame so that it doesn't move around it does have a raised bump there right where the uh, retaining pin goes across it just to keep it from really flopping around at all and uh, after that the whole thing it's doing is just putting pressure on the bottom of the sear to keep the sear pushing back towards the hammer. So we'll set those guys aside. The J-shaped disconnector with wonder wings and uh, a thousand and one different shaped surfaces. Uh, Smith was uh, going crazy when they built this stuff. This is some wacky ass design. Some of it's very normal. The top of the disconnector, it's, uh, you know, that makes sense. It's got a little slopey bit so that it can get pushed down by something running over the top of it. Uh, and it, you know, sits happily up in the frame. 
and then you know that ramp surface there pushes it down and then it pops right back up so now the theory here is that once uh once we get the trigger and trigger bar out that all the remaining mysteries will be made clear <laughs> I say that sarcastically. So what's going on in here is you have a trigger return spring that is on a uh, it is on an actual trigger return uh, pin, a big pin, and that is pushing into the trigger slash trigger bar mechanism. Uh, this spring here is broken. I apologize. I, I'll, um, I think I gave a customer my good trigger and took his bad one because I couldn't find a replacement one at the time. Um, and what you can see of this trigger already should tell you that there's some weird stuff going on. Um, again, you've got a trigger bar with you know wonder wings on the back, funny little dongle on the front. It's got some craziness. Um, but the tricky part really here is that uh, it does move up and down for you know normal kind of disconnect action. And that means that um, as we drive this pin out, uh, there is this force that's going to want to launch the whole thing backwards. Uh, that's more a problem of getting it back together than getting it apart. So uh, to get it apart, we should just be able to uh, pop him out. And uh, again, now the punch is you know, holding up on that. But um, yeah, so it does have a uh, divot in the middle makes me wonder if that's the right pin or not Jesus maybe that's why I lost it because it looks exactly like the other one so what's gonna happen here that makes this a little wacky is um, the trigger itself is got hooks on it that are coming up over part of the trigger bar and uh, reckless pl pulling of the trigger with that piece broken does tend to make a mess but what's going on is with the trigger all the way pulled and the trigger bar forward that's the position that the trigger can actually come out in so if we hold the trigger bar in there with our thumb uh, what we have to do is manipulate it's been it's been a while there we go uh, you just got to get the, the trigger to go down uh, far enough that you can get the trigger bar past it. And now this is completely broken off. And then the trigger actually, after the spring mechanism comes out, then the trigger actually has a path that it can exit out the top of the gun. And that's got yet one other pin in it. So, uh, putting all those bits together so you can see what the heck was going on in there, you had um, this detent that's in there was to hold the um, trigger pin in place. Uh, well, I'm not going to knock it through there, but basically that, that just you know came up in the groove so the trigger pin doesn't drift out. The crazy trigger bar has a, div has a dimple, and this... Um, the spring and pin of the trigger return uh, rides in that dimple so that even though you know it's going to move through a large area of space it doesn't lose tracking and come off to the left or right the spring that just the spring that just broke off here um, it's a very fragile little leaf spring looks more appropriate to something in electronics to be honest uh, I will have to think my way through what that even does. We'll put it back together and find out. Um, looks like it's kind of a pain in the ass to replace, too. So hopefully it doesn't do much. But, uh, yeah, we'll find out. So the cool part <clears throat> is how these guys engage. And this is what's going on. So uh, trigger bar sitting there. Trigger itself has hooks that come up to there so when you pull the trigger back you are pushing this hook forward which basically hooks right in there on the left and right and claws that thing all the way forward when it's uh, not doing anything that's the the backed out position trigger uh, these two surfaces are nearly flat up against each other 
And again, when you pull the trigger, you've got just enough room cut into this bottom half of the trigger bar that it can rotate and pull the whole thing forward. Now what this means though, is that uh, since you've got these sharp points of contact in that V-shaped groove on the trigger bar, it means the trigger bar can be going up and down willy-nilly and not really have any impact on what's happening with the trigger. So as you're pulling the trigger, the trigger bar can get disconnected, reconnected, push into other stuff. It doesn't really matter. Um, there's no angles there that, that uh, you've got a perfect pivot point, essentially. So from a machinist standpoint, uh, I'm sure somebody in the machine shop wants uh, the designer dead, but from a functional standpoint, not so shabby. Now here's where things get weird. Um, our crazy sear um, I'm gonna have to try and put some of this together to hold some of these in place just so we can see what's going on and let's see what can I do to make that actually work intelligently do, 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 do. Yeah, I'll just shove this in here for now. Um, so, this is our sear doing sear things. Our hammer is up here doing some hammerly things. So, we can kind of see what's going on. The sear uh, is going to catch the hammer. There. Not sure how far back that actually gets to go. And then release. So that looks like that. Now you got the trigger bar. How does the trigger bar do all those things? All the voodoo that it does so well. And uh, the answer is that it kind of goes around all this stuff at the same time and provides all manner of extra functionality. So um, the first thing that you might notice is these big wonder wings on the far back of the trigger bar are that secondary sear for the double action pull. So they're holding on to the ass end of the uh, hammer. So uh, and the hammer's pushing up, but if you start to pull the trigger, you know, just forget about what's going on with the sear, just this connection here is gonna hold on to the hammer until um, until those clear <clears throat> that so that's the, I'll take the sear out in a second to demonstrate that one more time but from the uh, more rational single action pull standpoint and this is hard to demonstrate because the hammer needs something buffering it under here then I don't have anything really good holding it in place see if Mr. Punch can hold it there for a minute. So, um, do, 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 when everything is in a slightly more normal position and the sear is holding everything in, in this case, um, the, well, here, we're not going to be able to show it that way very easily. Uh, the <clears throat> the trigger bar is going to engage um, the hammer excuse me, the trigger bar is going to engage the sear here and, and just tug those off and to be honest, I'm having a hard time remembering whether it actually grabs on these flats or if it grabs the underside I want to say it actually comes up from underneath to pull the sear away and rotate the sear so that's the single action, just has to pull the sear back a little bit. Uh, but meanwhile, it has clearance to ride past the sear and engage those double action hooks for the full pull. And so that's the two places that the, you know, the, the basically, it, it lets the sear, <clears throat> it lets the trigger bar work on the back side of the sear where things have to happen for the double action, but then like most trigger bars, it's just tugging the sear out of the way for the single action. Now the other piece that's going on in here, uh, as this 
gets all jiggy with it is uh, the disconnector and that's why everybody has these paths down through the middle is because disconnector um, has to be able to get through the sear without touching the sear and messing the sear up but it has to be able to reach down and uh, push the sear uh, far enough down that the that the uh, excuse me, push the trigger bar far enough down that the sear pops over it. So that's what's going on here. Is this sear is shaped so that uh, when something pushes it down, this is the surface it's pushing down on. It's just this part of the trigger bar right in the middle, and all that big clearance in the sear is just so that it doesn't uh, bump in to anything. And I think we're going to find that the funky J-shaped tail of it has to do with uh, uh, I want to say one of the other safeties I'm having a hard time remembering how the hell that thing engages one of the things that is notable about this design is you notice there's no holes in this no pins going through it uh, this when everything is assembled is literally just sitting in the gun so it sits in there and uh, it gets pushed down or up and you know what? I, I demonstrated that wrong. The J points to the back. Sorry about that. So it can't fall out the top of the gun because it's got the wonder wings and there's only a round hole cut in it. So the little wings on the side keep it from coming too far up. So that's as far up as it can go. And they also provide uh, for something um, notably when our ejector here gets pushed down into its slot, that's what it's actually making contact with. If you can see, um, <laughs> if you can see right down in here, um, as I move the ejector, the disconnector down and back up, um, these are those wings on the side of it, and. Uh, you know, the ejector in this slot as it's pushed down pushes those wings down and so anything coming down um, will create a trigger disconnect uh, which is which is going to be important and that's also related on the other side if you recall the hammer drop is in the same position so both the hammer and the magazine re uh, safety uh, operate by pushing down on the wings of the disconnector to create that that disconnection between the trigger bar and, and the sear there. Um, i trying to remember why it's got that big old J shape on the back. So we already established that it just has clearance to come down and uh, not really get in the way of the sear. It's going to push on the trigger bar what the hell else is going to be down there that would have made that J-shaped design make any damn sense? And that's a, that's a big part of uh, working with firearms is figuring out what the designer had in mind, why they did it. Very few things are there for decorative reasons. Especially on the inside. Um, so not, not always is everything readily apparent but uh, you know it's got to have a reason or it wouldn't have been done that way so we can try and think about how um, some of the other functions work so the ejector and the hammer drop uh, work in the exact same fashion uh, in terms of creating a uh, trigger disconnect so how does the hammer drop um, you know how does that uh, get get our sear out of the way how how does it allow uh the, the the sear mechanism to come off and i think one of the easier ways to do this might be to actually cinch the sear back in and uh and if we can get him back in place then we might be able to illustrate some of these things uh a little bit more easily <laughs> Whiskey Tango Foxtrot over. 
Oh, do I have to? Hmm. So there's a little bit of a bend in this pin, and uh, you kind of got to use that bend to your advantage, which means you've got to put it in right, right side up versus upside down so that that bend can make it over the slate bump in the uh, in this in the, in, the, in the sear spring there so if I look carefully at which end has that bump I want to say that it's yeah I think it's this side <laughs> this is one of those things where you can tell that you're doing something wrong and uh, always a good time to stop if something doesn't feel right chances are you're doing something wrong and I get the feeling that this might have been designed a little differently than I'm thinking about it. Specifically, I'm wondering if they didn't expect you to simply put the pin in place without any necessary pressure and then just slide this piece up under it and let it lock into place that way. Because I'll tell you, it's giving me fits. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So the reason that I'm suspecting this craziness is is a couple different things here. All right. So one is this pin itself. Um, you, you saw how hard it was for me to push it through. Uh, realistically, all of that is. is because of the pressure from the spring, the hole is actually a little bit wider than the pin. Um, so what I'm thinking is that uh, this pin does have a, a slight arc to it. And if I look carefully as I'm putting it in and I rotate it so that that, that rounded side is uh, maximizing the amount of clearance underneath it, then when I go to slide this guy in, realize you couldn't see most of that but the hope here is that we can uh, tap this spring into place like that without tearing it up too bad and now uh, that spring holding our, our leaf, or excuse me, that pin now under a tremendous amount of pressure, uh, holding it in place. The sear itself, uh, there's really nothing on, on the back side of the sear at all. It's the pin doing all the work. So all we're going to do here is uh, position it correctly and uh, hope that the leaf spring is going to provide enough sear tension to demonstrate this. Yay. And yeah, a lot, but enough. So that's our sear. We can see what's going on there. Um, if we want to sub in parts one at a time, we'll throw in our hammer. And uh, no, not if I don't line it up, we won't. So now we have, whoops, <laughs> that was dumb. Have to have room for the hammer strut to move if any of that's going to work. So, uh, yeah. all right. So, uh, Sear is in fact holding our hammer back properly. If something does, uh, pull the sear out of the way, then our hammer can come forward. So the question then becomes, 
with the crazy disconnector. a theory. We'll see if I'm right. First of all, it helps put the disconnector into the firearm. Uh, you know, kind of important step in demonstrating how something works is to actually have the part uh, in... Whoops. Seriously, dude? Is that going to not go in once the sear is in? Alright. This doesn't want to work for me today. All right, so disconnector in. Sear. Sear in. Yeah. Hammer stretch. Question is um, my theory here, and it's going to be a little tricky to tell, is that if I hold the disconnector up and uh, if the hammer comes forward. We're running out of uh, pins to demonstrate. My theory is that the hammer itself might have... No? No? All right. So that was my theory, and it was wrong, um, which was that the hammer might rotate far enough to actually have pushed the disconnector down, but it doesn't. The hammer is now all the way forward, and that disconnector is still got plenty of room to stick up and, and be out there. It's, it's, I'm wondering if it's just stabilization. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any part of the, uh, of the hammer that would ever engage in that third leg. So it could just be, uh, to help keep it from rotating, although... It, Realistically, it's already sandwiched right there in the sear. I mean, it can't really go uh, rotating left or right a whole hell of a lot. Not sure which angle of this uh, makes easiest to see at here. But what I'm trying to show you is these guys here um, and my disconnector there. So. That's my disconnector, and I don't see how he could rotate, even if that tail weren't there. But it is! So... We know that the rounded bit can push on... Oh... I've got an idea. Alright. One thing I didn't consider originally was the possibility that the uh, that our trigger has to track through a pretty large range of motion and it is conceivable <laughs> it is conceivable that within that range of motion Um, that it, it when the trigger is all the way forward then the disconnector uh, would not engage it that the 
this connector wouldn't come down far enough. And I think that's what we're going to see that, yes, sure, when I when I pull the trigger and it moves forward, then the middle of the J is or the back of the J is pushing down on it. But there's other points where it wants to operate the disconnector where the trigger bar is further back. And in those cases, it's the tail of the J that's then coming into contact with it. It's always a reason. You just gotta think it through. And let's see if I if I pop my trigger bar back in there. And uh, let's see, like the genius that I am, I just drop that on the floor. We're gonna put our trigger in there. We're gonna get our trigger bar uh, half-heartedly engaging it. We're gonna stick this pin just far enough in to hang on to it, and then we're gonna find the disconnector that I just dropped on the floor and drop him back into the firearm. one of those rocket science moments where I completely forgot the order of doing everything to do with this firearm. Alright, we're going to put the disconnector in there. Somehow it fell out while we were putting this in, but once this is properly in place, I think it actually gets in the way of the disconnector. Kind of keeps it from falling out. So we'll just use our finger to do that for the short term. Get our bar in there get our trigger engaging with it, set our trigger pin temporarily again, and now hopefully we can see what's going on. So when the trigger is all the way forward, the disconnector, doo -doo 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 -doo. yes, it is only the tail, the big long J, that could actually cause a disconnect. So that is another safety feature. So, you know, we're not, whoops, lost it. So in this, sorry, one more time, I'll try not to drop it a third time here. Yeah, so the idea here is that the disconnect is gonna get pushed down by an awful lot of things. And, um, I guess the logic was the the more often you keep that trigger um, disconnected from the sear, the less problems you can have. So while the gun is cycling, uh, or if you're racking the gun and the trigger is forward, it's basically got an automatic disconnect. It's gonna it's gonna pull the trigger away so the trigger can't possibly uh, take the take the sear off. So no matter where you are in the trigger pull top to bottom uh, the only only if the gun is completely in battery do you do you get a disconnect or a, a, a opportunity for it to reconnect so that pretty much um, explains why you've got that big long J shape on the disconnector I also think from a putting the gun together standpoint that if the uh, if the trigger is all the way to the rear, you can you can rotate it just enough to pop that in so you can put the disconnector in after the trigger bar, which I think is actually going to be a requirement for proper real assembly once we get in there. Oops. Now this is something that's easy to forget, is that uh, when you're looking at that trigger and it's got its funky shape, it, it's tempting to try and get it out the, the back of the gun. Uh, through the through the magazine well and and you really can't as far as I can tell they, they, they created that pathway through the front for a reason um, oh uh, lock up how does that work 
there we go. So um, the the frame itself is uh, going to engage the the ramp on the side there and uh, cam the gun down. So that's uh, the locking mechanism is that that simply that shelf there engages in the uh, cutouts you can see if the if the light is right you can see the wear and tear on uh, those parts of the frame right in there uh, from it doing its lockup job Ooh, look at all that crud in there I gotta clean that bad Dan no biscuit all right well enough how does it work why does it work let's put it back together and see if it still works hmm anyone remember how this went together all right uh, let's get the springs apart since they're all stuck in on one another and um, pretty sure we can put everything together on the trigger side of it and uh, line the rest of it up after the fact But you do you do have to do these things in order because they the parts fight with each other. It doesn't have a ton of clearance, um, so let's drop the trigger in first. Then the the re trigger return spring with its little divot. Then we're gonna slide the trigger bar in. And the critical part here is that we got to pick up that divot. So um, well, that's one of the critical pieces. And then after that, we're gonna make sure. That the trigger itself has um, whoops yeah, not done that so the trigger bar has to pick up the return spring uh, otherwise we'll squish it and uh, it won't, she won't she won't work right if she's squished we're gonna push the trigger bar in a bit to get the hammer or excuse me to get the trigger up under it yeah, now the trigger's caught up under it. And then we're going to get the trigger pin moving in there. And uh, tap her home. Now, remember, that was a pretty big, substantial pin in there. Uh, so now the trigger, trigger bar is connected properly in its little divot the trigger itself coming up clawing onto the back of that and we've got motion and we've got a little bit of return there again not sure what the little electronics piece looking thing was going to do I suspect we'll find out you know there was one other mechanism we did not talk about in the hammer drop and uh, that was exactly how this caused hammer to drop and I believe that the answer has to be um, that it just pushes the sear off so if uh, I'm just gonna put this in here try and hold these pieces together and think about where well, this one went through the hammer piece so if that was in there where would it run into the sear? If the sear, well, not if the sear's in the wrong hole. There we go. That's a little bit more. I know you can't see this right now. Give me a second. There she goes. Lift it up to look at it and forget everything about where everything is. So that's pretty much the normal position for the sear and this piece um, guessing sits just like this so that when you push it forward it's engaging with the the right side on the back of the sear and that ramp angle there just pushes the sear forward which is going to cause it to disengage with the hammer at the same time we're pushing the, the the wing of the disconnector down so it's going to push the trigger off so that the trigger isn't uh touching the sear and then it's going to also push the sear off the hammer causing the hammer to drop so that's how that one works and then the last but not least bit 
is the firing pin safety and I'm guessing what we're gonna see on this guy is that uh, I think he simply engages with the side of the trigger that uh, this piece back here if I were a Benton man um, you know our trigger whether it's single action or double action uh, it does its job right there at the end of its pull and uh, my guess is that that the trigger itself is going to be hooked over over the back of this so that when the trigger completes the last part of its pull forward it's lifting that up and we should be able to see that if I actually tuck him into the gun temporarily and uh, yeah we can we can see that the trigger bar yeah he does sit whoops probably easier to see no there's nowhere where this is easy to see but uh, the long and short of it is is yes that's what's happening is it's just catching the inside of the trigger bar which is sufficient to pull it forward so I think that we've explained every angle of all those pieces so we should be good to go for putting it back together uh, which I think I want to go ahead and get our disconnector into place. Do, 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 do. Ah, sorry. Ta -da. So disconnector and I think we can get the sear in independently. And I've been I've been wrong before, so if I do this twice, you can laugh at me. these three pieces lined up at the same time along with the, uh, the handy dandy springs so spring goes into the cup and the firing pin safety uh, I think we remember we had to rotate that around a little bit yep. the hammer drop safety kind of the same thing go tucked him down now I've lost my firing pin safety come back do, 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 do. now I think I might be smart here and uh, just use a punch to temporarily hold these guys in place they seem to really want to fall out for me hammer as well all right and of course my sear fell out these things happen So he's only through the hammer. Got our other spring here and our ejector slash magazine safety. All right, so sort of a good start. This is where uh, there's a bit of a challenge, mainly because I don't remember the trick to it. So as we go and put the real pin in, wiggle it through each of these pieces 
Um, what you're gonna see happen here uh, is that we're gonna we're gonna fail, but in an interesting way. <laughs> side. Not sure what my hammer pin's hung up on here. Bear with me. Taking these guys back out just because I can't see why the hammer pin is being so pissy. It feels like it's lined up, but obviously it ain't. Not sure what that was all about. <clears throat> Besides my big fat fingers. So we're just gonna do this same same as last time. Tuck that guy in. Get the big ones started around. Oops, sorry about that. Pulled it off camera. Do, 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 do. Line those guys up. So, this is the fun and tricky spot. Uh, is it right? Is it wrong? What, what what do we do here to get this last bit over? So this this sear pin needs to actually be retained by uh, the hammer pin. So we can we can line it up and push it through on the other side. And we can kind of get a leg over, but not, not two. So what's the trick there? Is it supposed to be just like a big leaf spring? Are you supposed to just, you know, put that pressure on it and pop them over one at a time? To be honest, I don't know. I, uh, I often, uh, you know, just put them in at the same time to get around this particular problem because I've never looked up the correct quote unquote answer. So, you get to watch me guess for a minute. I think this punch might just be a little bit wider than the hole in the sear, so I might not be able to push this through this way. Uh, or I get this reaction where I do have one one of those legs coming up and over. Oh, there we go, and the other one snapped over. So who knows what the trick is. If all else fails, like I said, you can connect them both up front, and then you just have to kind of work the sear in at the same time as you're working you know, the hammer and all other pins in at the same time, which, you know, as you saw, there's some, some level of challenge to that, but it will eventually all seat in there and you will have that pin properly retained and you'll have, uh, let's see. Here in the right place. I'm just looking to see 
uh, everybody in the right spot or not. So that's our single action and our double action is working as well. Um, again, firing pin safety is coming up. And if either of those comes down, that's a trigger disconnect. Feels like everybody's working, even without the mystery piece. And uh, looking at the mystery piece, I, I'm just stumped. I, I will have to get online and uh, try and figure out oops, what exactly it did. I mean, it obviously put a, a ever so slight amount of downward pressure on the uh, the trigger bar, but from the front, and I don't know if that pressure would be increasing or decreasing as you pulled it, because it's hard to see now that it's busted off where those guys would actually sit. I think it would be applying no pressure there, but as you released the trigger bar, it would probably provide just a little bit extra downward pressure I'm stumped guys if it's important we'll find out when we get it all back together so uh, not to forget about our handy dandy magazine release because we like magazines toss that back in toss the detent back in and remember that we can start this but we're not gonna get real far until we push that to detent in so carefully we've got one finger behind the thing holding the safety excuse me magazine release in and then total failure but at least we didn't lose the pin from the entire work area I'll try this again Push our spring in, set our screw there, and really it doesn't go super far down. I, 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 I mean, it doesn't need to. Um, you know, that doesn't have to stick out a whole heck of a lot. Um, Excuse me if I just totally whacked the camera. Alright, well, magazine release releases. I'm declaring that a victory. Um, any of these other parts go in the bottom? Nah. Let's just put the grips back on along with our big ol' spring. So as I mentioned, now that, that spring does ride in, in the bottom there and we do have to be careful getting these started so I find the easiest way to do all of this without breaking anything is to uh, kind of come in from the back and uh, stretch these over right from the outset and once you get them you know, started on then uh, it's gonna be pretty easy this you make sure that you uh, have caught the bottom of your, your hammer spring housing and um, Everything's just going to be pushing, you know, forward and up at the same time, and it'll just pop right into place. And essentially, the the plastic is is gripping onto it. Now, if I hadn't lost that pin, this would be the right time to put that in. Uh, magazine disconnect. Um, the hammer drop. Uh, da, 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 da. So let's see. I don't want to break my thumb off, but essentially, if my hammer has dropped like that, then my trigger is also disconnected from the hammer. So it's still going to operate the firing pin safety, but so long as that safe, that safety, uh, that's why it's doing that. That's the other reason. It's not so much for the hammer drop feature. It actually disconnects the trigger 
So when the gun is in safe, you can basically pull the trigger all day long and nothing happens. You've just got a disconnected trigger. That's what's going on. That's pretty clever. Um, looking for something to clean this up just a touch. Ooh, looks like somebody peed on this. So, um, that's pretty funky. Funky, funky. All right, so that's our frame uh, back in one piece. Now let's grab all the uh, little itty bitty bits of the slide and put that back together. Got two D10s. Double the challenge, double the fun. So the uh, little rounded one was that uh, first one that's gonna operate in there. Um, might not tuck that all the way in until later. So step one that we're gonna do is get the firing pin in, which required the firing pin safety to be pressed. So we push the firing pin safety. What I'm gonna do here is I think I can get this pin to actually, if you push the firing pin all the way in, if you notice that almost totally clears the, uh, the pathway. I mean, we'll have to bump it a little bit as we get in there, but it's mostly out of our way, which means that we can get this guy started, um, you know, fairly, fairly good. Um, basically, uh, I've started him past the the groove for the other side. I'm gonna just reach in, tuck that firing pin back the rest of the way, and uh, this is pretty good. We're all the way through. The one thing I did have to do after I cleared the firing pin, then the firing pin was pushing back on it again, which means e even though it's a pretty solid cylinder, it will be canted just a little bit. So you will have to touch you know, the cylinder a tiniest bit just to get it to, to line up. Now, uh, all I've got to do is get this detent in enough to get it the next step. And lo and behold, now I've got a safety. It's not going to stay on. Um, actually, actually, it is because the firing pin itself. Once once I release the firing pin safety, the firing pin is going to come so far back that you wouldn't be able to get the safety out again. So at this point, now the safety ain't going nowhere. So we could operate it like this. Should you lose your ambidextrous side, um, but you know, why would we do that if we don't have to? this spring back in back into the hole starting this guy in and again down on the detent pops itself back up and uh, like I said uh, I got to get that pressed out not sure why I've, I remember looking online when I first got it and some people said um, yeah that was hard other people like mine fell out so don't know Up our slide, our barrel. Now this does actually have a notch. Um, it's really faint. Uh, there is a half moon notch here, so don't let, don't try and set uh, the recoil rod all the way back here. It does like a Glock, only a lot fainter. Um, but it, but it is there. So uh, as you start that recoil rod, it will catch just barely, but it will catch there. Um, so that's going to help you put it on. Now, the other thing about putting it on is uh, all this crap sticking up. That's problematic. Now we know that can go down most of the way without a problem. Uh, the firing pin safety can, but the hammer, the hammer drop, well, that's going to drop the hammer. And the other thing is that um, the disconnector actually doesn't quite go down as far with the hammer back. Um, the, the the ejector will be held up a little bit too high so you really want to do this with the hammer forward but you're also going to have to manipulate it by hand so you've got to tuck the ejector down so it can get over the ejector you're going to have to tuck the firing pin safety down so it can get over the firing pin safety lever you're going to have to tuck the hammer drop down you're actually going to have to tuck it significantly down to get it over it and now you're past all that stuff and now 
Uh, this pin, if you noticed, it's got a, a cut on that one side. That's because we've got to push past that spring that was in the recoil rod. Um, and if we just came in with any other part of it, it would be a pretty hard angle to, to succeed at. So what you want to do is focus on where that is. And, and essentially, if you're holding this perfectly horizontal, it's in the right place. So uh, with the slide you know, held back to its right, like uh, naturally, it's going to be a little bit forward uh, that, uh, I don't know, 16th of an inch. You're going to want to let it get back the rest of the way. That's going to line this hole up properly to get you started past that pin. Now I've pushed past the pin, so the pin in the recoil rod is being held back, but I'm not gonna get it into the frame all the way uh, till it's a little further on. So um, again, we don't wanna get it to the point where we push on it. We're gonna get it through as much as, that, as we can. Then we're gonna rack the slide and put it the rest of the way in. Comes out the other end, it's retained by the slide itself. Um, so it does uh, that that recoil rod, the pin in it is going to push at such an angle that it forces that to pop back down. Um, it also has a built in detent here riding on this shelf, which was the that that big flat piece that held the hammer pin and the sear retaining pin all in there. One big piece doing a whole bunch of stuff. So this is actually what's providing more of that downward force, I think. I think the recoil rod pin is really just uh, uh, holding it from falling out. So I take that back. I lied. All right, uh, hammer drop works. And like I said, what we determined is um, when the hammer is in the, when, when the safety is on, that hammer drop is also a permanent disconnect for your trigger. So we got nothing going on. Uh, you will notice that uh, you can actually see that the hammer is being mechanically pushed back by the safety. When the safety's off, this hammer actually comes to rest on the the back of it there. Uh, and you know, I would say dollars to donuts. I think if I can convince myself whether that is in any way unsafe or not. So if it was if it was cocked and we had a round in the chamber, we put the hammer drop safe in the safety on, and now we go back to double action mode. Oh, the firing pin safety is not operated until we actually pull it back. So I, was, I was wondering if, if something could hit this hard enough to set it off. Uh, if you dropped it and something came in at the right angle to hit it. And the answer is, well, yeah, it is making contact with the firing pin, but the firing pin safety is preventing the firing pin from going any further forward than that. So it really is safe. Um, we saw the magazine safety in action, uh, whether it's sing double action or single action, um, that plastic pin, plastic spring, uh, the plastic safety is pushing down on the ejector, which is pushing down on the disconnector, which is holding the trigger out of, uh, out of the path of the sear and the hammer. So, um, no matter what's going on with the magazine out of it, whether it's in double action or single action mode, um, it's still the disconnect is essentially active um, because that ejector is being held against the disconnector, stopping it from coming forward. The magazine actually pushes that plastic button closed. So um, that's the that's the force that that you get when that magazine actually closes in here that last little bit of force you're actually pushing up that safety in the in the in the slide and at that point everybody's re-engaged so uh function test double action uh listen for the disconnect single action listen for the disconnect 
so safety checks um, no magazine that one we already checked um, hammer drop on safe back on fire you've picked up the single action that's everybody that's the whole firearm and that's the ladysmith hope you had fun